So back in chapter 3, and we're looking at the prayer of Habakkuk, and it says the prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon his shiganoff. Now, the shiganoff is just, it's a psalm. Music. So this would be what you would call the book of Psalms. One of the books of Psalms we have. Telling us that some of the book of Psalms are prayers. Just put to music. O Lord, I have heard thy speech. Remember chapter 2, he's waiting on the Lord. And was afraid. Fear the Lord's beginning to wisdom. Fear the Lord's beginning to knowledge. That's what's lacking in today's Christianity. The fear of God. O oh Lord, revive, revival, thy work in the midst of years. Israel's in trouble. Judah's in trouble. The world's in trouble. Now there are people who think, and I believe it, and you, you know, you believe otherwise, it's okay. I don't believe there's going to be a, a worldwide revival. I don't think there's going to be a countrywide revival. I think a revival would be an individual, a family, and a well Christ Bible centered church. Let me say, you're not going to find a revival in a church that doesn't have the King James. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. All right, he's going to put the Chaldeans to, to judgment. We closed off. Judah's going to go into judgment. And then God came from Teman. Well, that's not the first coming, because Jesus, God, came... To Bethlehem. The Holy One from Mount Paran. Sila. That's a musical rest. That's also a term where you could find the second advent. So now we're jumping to the second advent. His glory covered the heavens, plural. And the earth was full of his praise, millennium. And his brightness was as the light. When Jesus Christ comes back, the seventh year of the tribulation period, there is no light, natural or artificial. Now when they look to the skies, to the heavens, they're going to see that light coming as a train in a tunnel. And it's not going to be heaven. For too many, it's going to be damnation. He had horns, and horns are a symbol like an animal of strength and power. If you ever seen two deer, male deers, with they're going at it? If anybody's ever been kicked, well not kicked, uh, bucked by a goat, it's strength. Coming out of his hand. But when we read Revelation 19, they say Jesus has a sword. It's not in his hand, it's out of his mouth. And there was the hiding of his power. Seven years. Of tribulation. And the only aspect they have of God Jehovah is Moses, Elijah, and 144,000. And everything else is satanic and antichrist. And it's been vials and trumps and, vials and seals of the wrath of God. 
Before him went pestilence. That's the tribulation. Burning coals went forth at his feet. There's a fire. There's a flame. He's not coming back in peace and love. He stood. God. Jesus. Measured the earth. I don't think that's where he's going to get a tape rule. I think that's judgment of the earth. Because remember, the curse now lies under a curse. And beheld. And drove asunder the nations. There's the separation of the sheep and the goats. And everlasting mountains were scattered. The whole entire landscape of the world and the earth. Everything's going to be modified when Jesus comes. The Bible speaks as the Mount of Olives is going to split into two. Their perpetual hills did bow. Here comes their creator. Here comes the Almighty. His ways are everlasting. Still, the earth and the world and the universe will have its day. It's going to burn up in fervent heat. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian did tremble at the coming of God. He's not that typical world view of God. That meek little, whatever you want to call the pictures are. He's a roaring angry lion. The lamb has, has done his job. And the finishing of that job is when Jesus is in peace. Jesus is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, sitting on David's throne in Jerusalem where the lion and the lamb will lie together. The first and second coming together. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was that anger against the rivers? They've been all dried up. They've all been turned to blood. Thanks to Moses and Elijah. Was I wrath against the sea? One third the sea. The ships are gone. One third the sea. The sea life is dead. This is coming out of the tribulation. That thou didst ride upon the horses. That's us coming back. And thy chariots of salvation. Who is he going to save? He's going to save the nation of Israel. He's going to give them a new heart. A new spirit. And those nations that did help the Jew in the tribulation. All is not lost when Jesus Christ comes back the second time. But many will be lost. The bowl was made quite naked. Revealed. According to the oaths of the tribes. That's Israel. Even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. You know, where did the rivers come from? Where did the river basins come from? In the beginning, God. The mountains saw thee. And they tremble. Earthquake. The overflowing of the waters passed by. The deep uttered its voice. That's outer space. And lifted up his hand on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. Their orbits. At the light of thy arrows they went. And the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. That's where Jesus said, He's going to send forth his angels, He's going to reap the land, reap the people, put in that sharp sickle. 
Lord, there's tares among the wheat. Do we go get the wheat? He says, no, not yet. Wait for the angels to go. Then we'll bind up the tares and cast them to everlasting fire. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, Israel, even for the salvation of thy anointing, Israel, There's been no nation that God's anointed. There's been no nation that God has redeemed. Oh, he saved Americans. He saved uh, Germans. He saved Russians. He saved Africans. But he didn't save Africa. He didn't save America. He didn't save South America. But Israel. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. There's the Antichrist. That wounded the head. By discovering the foundation onto the neck. Sila. Victory over the Antichrist. Thou didst strike through with the, the stave the head of his village. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. In the midst of the book of Job, 42 chapters, 42 months, God speaks out of a whirlwind. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. That's the goal of the Antichrist. In the tribulation, there is two, only two classes of people. Those that have the mark and those that didn't receive the mark. There's no middle class. And all those that are poor and don't have the mark. All the powers of the world and all the powers of the Antichrist will be to devour them. Because many of those poor are going to be Jews. Because Jews can't receive that, that mark or that name or that number. If they want to be right by God. You think the poor has got it hard now. The Bible says without that mark you can't buy or you can't sell. I don't care what computer program you get. I don't care what kind of Hollywood or whatever you make a movie. That ain't going to happen. If they got a movie where... where People, a group of people overcome the, the mark and the beast and all that, and they do buy groceries, you're going against the scriptures. Thou did walk through the sea with thy horses, Jesus, through the heap of great waters coming through the universe. I mean, what do you mean by the universe? Didn't the old time world maps, didn't they have a dragon in the waters? But those waters weren't the Atlantic, they weren't the Pacific, they were above your head, where the astronauts, nautical, in space ships, with a space captain, where if you get out of that ship, you need an oxygen suit. The waters are above your head. Were powers and principalities, the, the, the heavens, the second heaven, where NASA's gone and they don't belong there. When I heard, my belly trembled. And I, I when I was suffering with IBS, I was talking to the doctor, and I said, Doctor, I said, why is it every time we, we get a, a sudden rush of fear? You know, our stomachs get troubled. I told him, I said, you know, I know is that my stomach gets upset when, there, when there's a fear. And not being able to describe how he described it, he said is the, the fear mechanisms that are in our body is connected directly from the brain to the stomach. That butterfly, that quiver, that nausea. My lips quivered at the voice. Can you imagine 
how great it will be for us to see Jesus and hear his voice. Come, my bride. Can you imagine the world to hear the voice of Jesus? That sword that comes out of his mouth, we don't even know what it says. But we do know the power of God, the creator in the beginning said, God said, let there be. Let there be. Can you imagine the power of Jesus and whatever he said, his enemies burn up in front of him. Rottenness entered to my bones. Habakkuk seen something that God showed him about the second coming. And he's weak. Can you imagine the Apostle John being transported into future? And the Bible says that when John saw the mystery Babylon, even he marveled at what is this? Even John couldn't fathom mystery Babylon. I trembled in myself. Imagine what the enemies of Christ will be doing. I might rest in the day of trouble. Day second advent. The whole seven year period is called Jacob's trouble. The trouble of the Gentiles is when Jesus is on his horse. Da, 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 da. When, when Israel came across the Jordan by, by uh, Joshua and, and Jericho was in terror. Jericho had the whole place shut up. There was one woman in her family that sat in their room with a with a, a, a scarlet thread tied to the to her window. Here they come. Here they come. They're coming to get us. They come to save us. I believe that's what Israel's going to shout when they, when they see the Messiah coming with the church behind them for the world for the Antichrist. Not going to be so good. When he cometh up unto the people, that's on the earth, he will invade them with his troops. Who's his troops? Us, the Christians. Joel chapter 2. We're coming back as a mighty army. I know what Christians think today. You know, we're, we're being fluffy, buddy, cootie, tooting, kissy, whisking, sit on the couch, eat a bag of potato chips. That's not what we're going to be when we come back in Second Advent. We're going to be warriors. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, there's that fig tree again. That fig tree does not date the rapture of the church. It has nothing to do with the rapture of the church. But that fig tree, that has something to do with Israel. That fig tree has something to do with Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, they grabbed those fig leaves and they made aprons. Jesus is in Jerusalem. He comes up to a fig tree seeking figs and there was nothing. Not blossom means that there's no flowers. There may have been just leaves. Like when Jesus came to the fig tree and no fruit. Blossoms are flowers, then becomes the fruit. <clears throat> Neither shall the fruit be in the vines. That's the grapevine. Jesus said, Isaiah said that Israel's like and Jerusalem's like into a vineyard. A vineyard that has no grapes. The labor of the olive shall fail. Olive oil was used for the anointing of the kings and priests. The vine, the grape, Great Jews. Psalm says, cheereth God and man. It was a time of celebration. The fields shall yield no meat. There's been drought. Thank you, Elijah. There's been bloody waters. Thank you, Moses. There's been these, these, these uh, locusts with scorpion tails. Sea life. Gone, one-third. Shipping, gone, one-third. Fire, hail. Everything that you saw in the book of Exodus, 
done to Egypt. You know what the tribulation period is going to remind the Jew? It's going to remind them of great, 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 great grandma, grandpa. It's going to make them turn to the Torah. Oh, boy. This happened to Moses and our great, 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 great grandparents. And I am told, and I don't know, I'm not saying this, the story's not true. I'm, maybe somebody's going on there, but I have been told that there is a man that went over to sell a preacher, and he's going in there and hid Bibles. On the aspect is that that's where the place that God's prepared for the Jew. He wanted them to go there, and he wanted them to find the Word of God. The field shall yield no meat. We come out of seven years of tribulation. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Now in America today, we're reading about stories. We're in this great heat wave. And they're finding so many dead cattle. Something about they're throwing them in, in the dump. And I, I, read, I read somewhere, like I said, I read just the headline. They're selling off their, their, their cattle, their herds, to get rid of them. And the tribulation period, this is going to be, I can't say hell on earth, because hell is just as worse. But the powers be of hell is on the earth. You know, they mark cattle. You ain't going to have cattle unless you are marked. Yet, all the trials and tribulations, a Jew says, I will rejoice in the Lord. Millennium. I will join the God of my salvation, the Jews in the millennium. There is the temple. There is the priest. There is the children of Zadok. There is David. There is sons. There is the Christians. There is the, the nation of Israel. They're, they're together. They're no more Israel. They're no more Judah. There are the Christians. I don't know about the Christians that don't do nothing. There'll be the Christians that at least wear crowns. There's Moses. There's Elijah. There's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Samuel. Anna, Rachel, the twelve sons, Levi, Aaron, all of them coming up to three times in a year, coming to Jerusalem, and there is the Messiah, and the Gentiles are grabbing the Jews, saying, come on, let us go with you, because we know where the word of God is in you. We know you are the people of the Messiah. Let us come. That's the light of the world, not the Christian. We're not called to be lights of the world. We're called to preach the gospel of the light. And people come up to me, oh, I let my light shine when I'm on the street. I'll say, okay, you let your light shine, I let my light shine. Do they even know you're a Christian? For some reason, they get mad at me when I ask that question. It's amazing how people get mad at me when I speak the truth. The Lord God is my strength. He will be the strength of Israel, the nation. He will make my feet like hinds feet. That's what David said. He will make me to walk on high places, on ground that you think I can't get no footing. You ever seen that? There, there, there's a picture of a, of a rock steep. It's almost vertical at a little bit of a slant. And there are goats standing and I don't know what they're standing. There's like three or four goats that stand on the side of this rock. I don't know what they're standing on. 
that's going to be a type of Israel one day. That rock is Jesus. That rock that, that God told Moses, I'll put you in a cliff with a rock because you can't see my face. When I pass over, I'll put my hand over, I'll let you see. That rock was Jesus. And that rock that's Jesus, I think it's Zephaniah. Zephaniah and Zechariah says, what are the holes in your hands? What are the holes in your feet? And I'm not going to quote the verse right. They were in, they were made by the in the house of my enemy. Israel gather around. I'm the Messiah. Yes, like they told Elijah. God, He is God. The Lord, He is Lord. God, He is God. I'm the Messiah. They'll be saying that to Jesus. These wounds. You gave me these wounds. And he'll put the hands on Israel and say, Here's your new heart. Here's your new spirit. I forgive you. Don't look at those pictures of Jesus as the European, as the Italian. He's not European. He's not Italian. He's Jewish. He's brown skinned. He may have a small nose. <laughs> People don't like when I say that. He's Jewish. He will make me to walk upon my high places. Those high places in the Old Testament are places where they worship other gods. Not with Jesus. Jerusalem will be the highest place in the world in the millennium. That's the great geographic, you know, the, the great smoky mountains and uh, Mount Ararat and Mount St. Helens and Mount, I'm trying to say the biggest mountain, uh, Mount uh, Hel no, Hel um, Everest. No more. Jerusalem. You know, everywhere you speak about in the Gospels, they went up to Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem's a mountain. About this this prayer. It started off with a signal. Whatever. To the chief singer. You know who the chief singer is going to be in the millennium? And as soon as I said that, the name went flying. Aspeth. Aspeth. A-S-A-P-A. -A. That's the chief singer under David. To the chief singer on my string instrument. That would be a lair. That would be a, a violin. That won't be a ledger guitar. <laughs> I can't fathom what life is going to be when Jesus is going to be there. And neither can Israel. They are God's people. God will redeem them. God will give them their land. They are a nation above all nations, blessed of all nations. If you curse them, God will curse you. I used to support a missionary for Israel and somehow my bank won't allow me to do it. I don't understand what you're trying to say. I pray for him. I pray for him. You ought to pray for him too. Watch your Jewish joke. This is all about Israel. Jesus came onto his own because he was Jewish. Glory to God.